taller barriers, buildings raised off the ground, more money for flood defences, as the government is attacked for not doing enough to protect areas which are vulnerable to the rising of the waters. Are there other alternatives to those rather traditional solutions? The environmental campaigner George Monbiot thinks that there are more trees and fewer bare hills for one. He joins us on the line from Aberystwyth. The president of the National Farmers Union, Myrig Raymond, is here with me in the studio. And as I think we'll hear, is a little less than convinced by that. But first of all, George Monbiot, tell us why you want fewer bare hills. Well, the problem with flood defence as conceived at the moment is we wait for the wall of water to arrive in towns and then try to contain it. Um, Sensible flood defence actually tries to prevent the water from gathering so much in the first place. And that means, number one, trees in the hills. Trees increase the percolation rate into the soil so that the water's released more slowly. And number two, it means allowing rivers to get some structure back. At the moment, we canalise rivers, we dredge them out, we turn them into straight drains, and that means they rush the water down into the nearest town. But where rivers are allowed to meander, to form islands, banks of gravel and shingle, um, logs pushed up against uh, stones and the rest of it, then they will hold it back, slow the flow of water, and we get less devastating floods downstream. And in fact, it's very striking that there is one river in the Lake District where they've done that, the River Leeser through Ennerdale, and after the last massive rainfall in 2009, that river was still running clear, it was still fordable, even as all the other rivers were bursting into furious spate. Just briefly, before I put this to Myra Grayman, are you blaming policy, government in other words, mm-hmm. or are you actually blaming farmers, saying the problem with farmers is they just clear the fields, clear the land, mm. and uh, and make those rivers as straight as they can? No, I'm not at all blaming farmers. Farmers respond to policy, and the policy at the moment, the government is saying to farmers, go ahead and dredge your rivers in order to get the water off your land. Well, let's give well the further... water has to go somewhere, and if it's not on the farmland, it will go into the towns. Let's get the president of the NFU the uh, chance to respond to that. Myrick Raymond. Do you agree at all with him or do you think he's got it wrong? Well, first of all, I just want to show support and sympathy for the people who have been affected in the north of England over the last sort of 72 hours. The rainfall that we've seen is unprecedented. 8 to 14 inches of rain in 24 hours. So let's show some support for the people that's been flooded, for the farmers who've had the farms flooded, who have lost livestock and so forth. When I think back over the last 10 years, I would say that we have not invested enough money in river dredging, in river channel cleaning. When you think that the revenue account within the environmental agency has been reduced, we will have to invest more money in flood defences. There's no doubt about that. That is what other countries are doing across the world. But we definitely definitely need more maintenance, more revenue money so we can keep these river channels clear. Higher defences, more dredging. Let's put that to one side for a second. George Monbiot is arguing there is something else going on that basically because your members are being encouraged to have sheep on the fields and chop down trees in places, because your members are being encouraged to straighten out those rivers, that is meaning that the water gathers and then it comes rushing through the towns and onto the fields. There definitely has not been the investment in the dredging that should have taken place over the last 10 years. But let's go back a stage because because the countryside, if you look at the north of England, the tourist industry is so important. And when you think of the tapestry of land and how farmers have managed this land and they've maintained that land and its livestock on those hills have actually encouraged and attracted the tourists to those areas. So let's not rewild those areas because agriculture, food production, sheep production is so, so important in those areas to attract the tourists in. George Monbiot, you clearly... Uh, oh, this God. is crazy, you said. Why? Yes. Well, my rig is calling for more dredging and more channel clearing. That's what's causing the floods. This is the amazing thing, that if... Uh, you know, when you have a whole load of water dumped on the hills as we've seen it has to go somewhere the rivers themselves can't contain it there's far too much water for that so either you allow it to spread over agricultural land or you speed it past that farmland through dredging and channel clearing whereupon it comes down to the nearest urban pinch point a bridge bridge or some such and floods people's homes My and threatens people's lives Let's give him a chance to respond no, as i said earlier what we've seen in the last week is unprecedented when you no, see no, eight, eight to 
14 inches Forgive me, of rain. respond to his point. His point is it's being made worse I disagree. I disagree with that entirely. We've seen livestock numbers falling in the uplands. We've seen greater vegetation grow in the uplands over the last number of years. You speak to the environmental bodies today and they will say... Undergrazing is a greater issue than overgrazing. <laughs> so there is a lot more vegetation in the uplands. If you go back 20 odd years, overgrazing was an issue. So there is less livestock, there is more vegetation, water is held back. But again, it I'm is the this. fabric of that countryside, the uplands, where we produce some top quality beef and lamb, which is required by British consumers. So again, it's so important that farming is understood because it creates wealth and it creates a, an attractive countryside for tourists to enjoy. Myra Grayman, thank you very much indeed. I think George Monbiot had lots to say to you, I suspect. When they, when they get both in for advice on what to do to prevent the next floods, they might not get agreement, but thank you for your time.